Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of push-pull converter in MATLAB. This is a circuit diagram of a push-pull converter. Push-pull converter is basically a DC to DC converter. One of the major differences uh, between a push-pull converter and uh, an isolated converter uh, such as a, a flyback converter is that it basically contains two switches. The purpose of it is that the current should flow continuously to the primary winding of the transformer. That is when S1 is on, S2 is off and uh, current will flow due to S1. When S2 is on, S1 is off and current will flow due to S2. So in this case, primary winding continuously gets the current from the supply line. Uh, whereas in case of a traditional converter, which has only one switch in it, the current will not flow when the switch is off. As a result, there is steady flow of current throughout this particular uh, operation of a push-pull converter hence the uh, efficiency at the output is more and it can operate for higher power rating let us get into the design part of it the design basically contains these following assumptions that is made every design uh, needs certain assumptions that is required to be made so the first step is to determine the duty ratio so we will be um, uh, determining it by the formula we are assuming the turns ratio to be 2 in order to calculate it uh, once we have that uh, the next step is to determine the inductance value we are assuming uh, 40% triple current uh, so we'll be getting an inductance of 268.19 micro henry in this case uh, the next step is to determine the capacitance value so we are assuming 5% ripple however suitable value of ripple can be assumed and uh, the capacitance value changes accordingly uh, one of the important things to note is uh, you might get an inductance value in negative because uh, or the capacitance value because uh, you uh, have uh, one minus of uh, the values that is there so care has to be taken with respect to that um, next uh, these are the components that are required in simulating once we have this handy we will be able to start the simulation in MATLAB so let's get all right here we are I've already placed few components that are required so one of the commonly uh, difficult uh, components that uh, are to be searched is multi winding transformer so go to the simulink library browser and search for transformer you will be uh, getting uh, something called multi winding transformer over here so just select uh, this multi winding and add this block and apart from that uh, we'll be using a logical operator uh, that is a not gate in this case so search for a logical operator you will be getting it um, so and logical operator select this and add to this block once we have all like have them uh, we will be able to start entering the parameters to them so number of findings in the primary side is 2 and number of findings in the secondary side is also 2 set them uh, so that is a very important step uh, the unit is in SI unit uh, according to our calculation so we'll set them as well the power according to our design is 38.38 watt so let's select uh, like let's type in that and the frequency uh, of our design is 150 uh, kilohertz so this is one of the most important steps that students has to take into consideration while designing um, apart from that uh, the supply voltage uh, we have is 50 so since we are using two taps across the primary and secondary we'll be uh, entering 50 50 uh, in the primary side and 17.5 uh, 17.5 in the secondary side so once this is done uh, we don't need these winding resistance uh, we will just set them to zero because it adds on to additional drops across the transformer and uh, there will be huge deviation in the output voltage uh, uh, and it will not be desired uh, output voltage for us in this design as well so we'll set the windage leakage uh, winding leakage inductances to zero as well once that is done select on okay you will be getting something like this so uh, with respect to logical operator we will be selecting not gate and uh, with before that uh, with respect to the NOT gate double click on it and uh, select the number of ports input ports to one and select NOT gate with respect to this uh, particular concept the reason why we are using NOT gate is we are MOSFETs so the switches used is MOSFETs uh, the reason why I am using it is you can simply invert the NOT gate terminals and give it to the this thing instead of giving phase delay as in case of IGBTs so once that is done um, we will be um, able to get into the circuit uh, schematics part we will be connecting these two to the uh, supply uh, terminals and this is given to this one of the commonly made mistakes by uh, 
students is that uh, the position of uh, the MOSFET should be in this direction otherwise there are no chance that you will be close to the output voltage that is required uh, we don't use measurement ports so let's disable them um, this can be disabled for each and every uh, switching devices over here uh, we have disabled them for MOSFET now we are disabling it for diodes as well uh, because we are not using it anywhere so once this is done, uh, we'll be shorting this two terminals and uh, according to our circuit diagram uh, schematics, we'll be connecting it. So uh, the diode will come across this particular terminals. Uh, uh, the output voltage is uh, connected across the load. Um, we'll be connecting it uh, according to this. And uh, an RMS voltage block is used in order to determine the amount of RMS voltage value that is there and a display box to display the amount of RMS voltage. So this only gives you the display and visual representation. Let's uh, design the uh, type of component that is required and enter the inductance value. Uh, according to our design, it is 268.19 micro Henry. So uh, care has to be taken while entering these values as well. Any minute mistakes, uh, there are chances that we will not get the desired output voltage. Mm, we are using a capacitive filter across the load and it's 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 in nanofarad so the capacitance value is 41.42 we will be entering that value once that is done the type of load that we are using is a resistive load uh, and its value is chosen to be 8 according to our design we'll be entering that as well um, and uh, we are going to connect the output voltage uh, the amount of output voltage measured to the scope so that uh, we'll be seeing the output voltage waveform the supply voltage at the input terminals is 50 volt we will be setting that as well the pulse generator uh, this is one of the most important um, blocks that uh, requires a lot of uh, calculations uh, so the frequency uh, that is chosen according to our design is 150 kilohertz so uh, the uh, amount of time period has been given by 6.66 .66 into 10 power minus 6 in this case because um, uh, the reciprocal of uh, f is uh, 1 by t so that is why we will be choosing this and uh, the duty cycle uh, pulse required uh, with respect to pulse width is we need to change it to 50 percent because uh, each uh, switches should conduct uh, uh, for every uh, half time period of uh, the supply that we are giving it uh, so for example this should conduct for 50 percent of the cycle and this should conduct for 50 percent of the cycle so we will be changing that and once that is done let's run it so let's uh, check the amount of output voltage that is available so here we can see the output voltage is approximately 16.67 uh, close to 17 volts so let's check the output waveform by double clicking so we see a steady waveform which is approximately close to 17 volts so uh, we're not getting exactly 17.5 because uh, uh, the transformer has some amount of magnetization inductance and resistance where there will be drops across it uh, and that's the reason why we are not getting it so um, that's it for today uh, if you like this video please like it and subscribe to our channel for instant updates if you have any queries, please do uh, drop your questions in the comment box. Thank you.